All right, we're back. This week in fantasy baseball, just prior to opening day, Major League Baseball opening day 2014. I'm, I'm still a little flustered here that you switched your you're switching picks here on the, on the fly. I didn't know you were going, you know, a little past 1986. I thought we were like when we were kids, you know, so I thought it's 75 through 85. Well, even 75, and then you went Carew, and he, he was late 60s, early 70s more yeah. than anything. I mean, late that's late fine. I was born in 67. So, all right, all right. So, let, let, let's go. So, so you went first base. I went I went Don Mattingly first base. Donnie Baseball. I like that. I didn't, You know what? I didn't even think of Donnie. How could you not think of Donnie? You're right. I don't know how. I, again, I, I was focused in more on the 70s. I, what would you take? Do you want to switch Matt, again? <laughs> no. Mattingly or Garvey? Garvey, to me, was a compiler. No. Garvey, Garvey, was, never, no, no Garvey was never the best player at his position. He was an, He was, He was. was solid. He was he he was Cal Ripken before the, he, he what he he held a National League record. Who was a better first baseman than Garvey at the time? I don't know, Boog Powell. I don't Powell. I mean, come on, Ripken. No, why? Because he cut he, his he, sleeves. He, what 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 was he his was standout always... category? What was he noted for besides his forearms? He was a decent average hitter. What, he probably only averaged well, eighteen average home runs. Home runs, Powell. Look at this: 21, 111, 312, 18, 95, 319, 317, 1380. He was solid. Thirty-three, one fifteen, three. I'm sorry, look at that. That's that's OB. Three set, three seventeen. Uh, thirty, 30 twenty-one, one thirteen, three sixteen, twenty-eight, one ten. Yeah, but there's a reason some of these other names that we're talking about are in the Hall of Fame, and he's not. He was look, a compiler. Two ninety-four career average. Okay, 272 home runs, 1,300 RBIs. He had a fantastic career. I can't think of a better And his first wife was hot. She was hot. She was very good looking. She was a what? news person, right? What was this? Sk- Cindy Garvey, was she a skater? I don't know. I'm not sure. but I, don't know. I, I can't think of a better first baseman at the time. Who? Tony Perez? I'll think of somebody. Chris, Willie, Willie Montanez? Willie <laughs> Montanez? I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll think John, of somebody. John Mayberry? Boomer, J- Boomer I'll, Scott? I'll think of somebody. He, they, they, he, there's nothing compelling there to me. Uh, gosh, I, I totally disagree with you on that. I completely did. Look, he didn't, he didn't have the impactful numbers that Mattingly had. George for, Scott. For, for for five or six years. But I, like, Garvey, to me, was the best first baseman from, from our generation by far. Because he was righty. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's move on to second base. Second base. Second base. Second base. Who do I have? Who do you, you go first this time. Joe Morgan. I have Joe. Little Joe. You have Joe Morgan. I do have Joe. All right, so we got a Chris. So we had be- we're gonna have all the Reds together. We're gonna have all the Reds. We have Bench. We have Reds. Hey, a great offensive team. We, you really you, you could just pick the the big red machine and field the team. Yeah. Well, you, the funny thing, a few years ago, what was in Seattle had that heart horrendous year when they hit. Everybody was picking on their home run totals. They had surpassed the Reds, I believe, in '77 for home runs. So that different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I want Joe Morgan. I want Ryan Sandberg. Ryan Sandberg. That's a good pick. So about him those would be my two. I don't know which one you go with. One's a lefty, one's a righty. Different kind of personality. Um, Morgan had that, that thing yeah, that twitch with yeah. the elbow. And they just beat the crap out of the Yankees in 76. Too. They, I'd have to go Morgan, relentless. I think. But, uh, yeah, that's good. It's good. You've did. You done good there. You done, that was a much better than Dusty Baker and better yeah, than, Baker, Baker better than Garvey. Bad. Yeah. No, I'm sticking by Garvey. I, I think you picked him because of his wife. If you want to abuse me over Baker, I'll take it. Okay. I gotta, okay, I gotta okay, think. Okay, I gotta okay. come up. I'm, I'm okay. drawing a blind right now. Pesci on you. Okay, okay. But give me someone who is better than Garvey. I will. I'll come up with somebody. <laughs> I'll come up with somebody. Willie Machinez, please. Um. All right. Shortstop. I got Robin Yount. That's before he moved to center field. Obviously. I I just decided to go with Ozzy Smith, but yeah, I like Yount. Ozzy y- Smith. Well, Yount kind of threw me listen, off because he did move to center. From so. a fantasy standpoint, now, well, give me give me Ozzy Smith's stats. What was the most stolen bases he had? So he, he, you know he's a good player too. The, the player he was traded for, Gary Templeton. If I ain't starting, I ain't departing. He would he wouldn't go to the All Star game because uh, he wasn't going to start. Oh really? Yeah. Who was that? Was it Gary Templeton? Oh really? Yeah. Smith stolen bases. He solid. Uh, consistently above twenty, some thirties, fifty seven and eighty eight at the age of thirty three. Followed by twenty nine, thirty two, thirty five, forty three at the age of thirty seven. At fifty three at the age of wait a second. I'm I'm sorry. He had 43 at the eight, in 92 at the age of 37. Now, one thing that always intrigued me about him is he, you know, he was obviously noted for his defense, but he really worked on his offense. Look, look, just read his batting average off from the beginning of his career and to the end of his career and watch it how, how he improved his game. Right. Well, first what, what first year was 258, then 211, 230, and 222, 248, and then he started 243, 257, 276, 280, 303, 270, 270. 
254, 285, 295, 288. And then he really became a, yeah. a serviceable offensive player com- combined with his speed when you have that defense. Because in the beginning, it was it was, it was was nothing. It was, you know. And defensively, he used to take about a run away from yeah. the opponent yeah. every game. So. He'd do that flip thing when he went out with that. Exactly. No, Robin Yacht's a solid one. I'm trying to think. Well, he's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Fam- Dave Concepcion? No. Another red. <laughs> Larry Boa. Red. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Third base. Third base. Who do you got? I chose between two players, and the, to me, this is a no-brainer: Mike Schmidt or George Brett. Yeah, and, they were uh, the two guys. Those are the two guys. I never and, liked George Brett. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what it was. was it the hemorrhoids problem that he had. Well, yeah, the hemorrhoids <laughs> on the worst. Thing. Nah, I don't know what it was. That was great when he ran out with the pine tar thing, though. <laughs> yeah. ah, that, that, that was crazy. Uh oh. Those are the two obvious ones. I don't see how right. you could pick anybody else from our uh, childhood. No, uh, no. Uh, he, Brett and Schmidt. Who would you go? You, gun to your head. Who would you go with? Um, Schmidt just had more raw power. And Schmidt, uh, uh, Schmidt's uh, Brett defense. was a better p- pure yeah. hitter. And and um, here's the irony. Yeah, the thing is, I was more of a National League guy, so I followed Schmidt more. But you know, I, I would have to go Schmidt just because of the sheer power. But you, you can't really argue. Brett had a fantastic career. And, and Schmidt really worked on his averages last few years, and then pa- and then Brett too worked on his power, power. really improved yep. uh, before that. Um, and then my uh, middle infielder, I went with uh, Cal, Cal Ripken. I agree with that. I totally go with Cal. I, I don't think there's any question about that. And I chose a poor, uh, corner infielder. I went with somebody unorthodox who really late in his career, he extended it because of the, the, the DH and uh, batting average. He, he was immense, especially Paul Molitor. I love that. That's a perfect pick. I, you know what? Molitor, I started hitter. following him w- w- with the Brewers, and I used I, the '81 Brewers team. That was one of my favorite teams of all time. The '81 Brewers. You look at that line. The Brew Crew. The Brew Crew. Harvey's Wallbangers. Ben Ogilvy, Gorman Thomas. Okay. Paul Molitor, Cecil Cooper, Gantner, Jim Gantner, G- Jim Gantner, uh, Simmons R- behind the plate. S- Ted Simmons behind the plate. Uh, Sal Bando, I think had. I don't think he was on the team. The eighty-two. He might have been. He might have been. Uh, yeah, Sal Bando. I don't know if he's on the eighty-one or eighty-two team. I'm not sure. Raleigh Fingers uh, there. R- Raleigh Fingers was on that team. Absolutely. Don Sutton was was yeah. a pitcher on the, that team as well. So they had some really good pitchers. They played the Cardinals in the World Series, right? Played the Cardinals. Yeah. They, and they, uh, ironically, the only... they beat the Angels in eighty-two again uh, when Cecil Cooper got the big base hit off of Luis Sanchez. That's the only time in that World Series I ever saw somebody. And 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 here's your guy, Ozzy Smith. Ozzy Smith tagged up in the World Series, a center bo- uh, a fly ball to center field from second base, scored. I don't remember that. Gorman Thomas caught the ball in, in center. I remember if it was right center or left center, and kind of s- slipped a little bit on the warning track. And Ozzy Smith tagged up from second and home. If you, if you Google it, you'll see there's a, a the plate, the plate. You see him sliding home. It's it, it's still there. It's one of the fondest memories of baseball when I was a kid. Well, I think we did good here. I, I mean, it brings back uh, old memories of some great players that. Uh, All right, give me some pitchers. Give me give me give me a pitchers. Starting pitchers or relief? Anything. Give me anything you got. Okay, two relief pitchers: Raleigh and Goose. I had um, Bruce Suter and Dennis Bruce Eckersley. Right. Eckersley, but again, him was more later than turned into a reliever until later. Yeah, cause, well, he was an all star of both. Yeah, but he both. had that stretch. 20, yeah, he had that stretch. Yeah. I, I got to go with Fingers and Goose. I mean, they just both dominant, and Fingers would go three innings, Goose would go two. You like Suter? Is a pick? I like Suter. Suter's too. a pick. Yeah, Suter's Those four solid. good ones there, four good ones. I all think right. if I had to go one or between Fingers, Suter, and Goose, I'd go with Fingers. The one thing is, is that they got like three inning saves. Yeah. And they didn't just throw. Well, and they get 27 saves, but they were, you know. Eight yeah. nine. I remember Goose Goat getting eight eight nine outs. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't unusual. All right, uh, give me a starting pitcher. Starting pitchers, Steve Carlton. I got him. Good answer. And he wasn't a red. He wasn't a red. Tom Seaver. Got him. Jim Palmer. Nope, don't got him. Catfish Hunter. Nope. Okay. Gaylord Perry. Again, I, I can't draft <laughs> Gaylord. And then I was kind of torn between. Two pitchers, um, Vita Blue and J.R. Richards. You know, I had Vita Blue on, and I crossed them off to go with somebody a little more modern. I wasn't a kid anymore, but it was good. Dwight Good. I have good. I have two guys, but they didn't do it long enough. I think Gooden and Gidry, two guys. I have winning, Gidry. Two guys who have incredible winning percentage, but they just they don't have the two hundred wins. And they, but they best years I've ever seen in my life. Seventy-eight Gidry, eighty-five Gooden. Now, two guys that I do, uh, that I have on my team were both both at one point playing on the same team, and that's J.R. Richard and Nolan Ryan. 
Yes. Now, if wow, what a team that was! A lot of people probably don't, even our age, probably don't remember J.R. Richard because his career was cut short. And, and I'll never forget watching him lying on the pitcher's mound after having a stroke. But take a look at J.R. Richard. And give me J.R. Richards' strikeout totals in the prime of his career. I, I, I'm just it's, off the top of my head. He's, I'm he had a, eclipsed 300, he, and at least more than yeah, once. Yeah, he was an incredible career. Just give me one. I, he probably had more strikeouts than Nolan Ryan during his prime during those same years. J.R. Richard, where the hell is it now? Right with Houston. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, he had incredible, incredible seasons. Uh, let's see. He had, had to be with uh, Jim Richards, or is it? I'm guessing it's got to be over 300 strikeouts per year for at least two years, if not three. Hold on a second, because there's a few James Richards. Google players. it. I'm, I'm going in here. Hold on a second, J.R. Richards. J.R. James Rodney Richard. Here we go. What do you got? There we go. Look at this. is going to be, oh, my gosh. This is just incredible. Here. 291 innings, 214 strikeouts. Hold right. on. 267, 214. Then he goes 275, 303. Three and three. Yeah. 292, 313. And his last year, 1980, when he was 10 and 4, 1.90 ERA, pitching the All Star game. I remember him striking out Reggie. Uh, 113 innings, 119 strikeouts. So he had three, uh, two years with over 300 strikeouts. But look at the the amount. If you look at like him and Nolan Ryan and a lot of these older guys, there were a couple of years where he approached 300 innings to, to in the 290s. Oh, or, oh, Catfish used to throw 300 innings. Like now they're was, cutting guys he, off. What's had 30 complete games. Now now me? these younger guys we're talking about in fantasy, oh, will yeah. they get to the 200 inning mark? Look at look at Richard, 20 and 15, 18 and 12, 18 and 11, 18 and 13, and 10 and 4, 107 and, and 71, 3.15 ERA. A little high because he struggled early on with his control. But those last few years are incredible, incredible numbers. Another guy that we left off this Again, was a little later with Jack Morris. Jack, you know, again, Jack, I know big, big he made that whole finish it, but again, he to me he was never no. he was a big game pitcher, but he was never his ERA is not uh, uh, what it might be four or the middle threes or over four. Uh, I think it was three point eight six, but, but you know what? That's when the he was a big game start, pitcher, big game pitcher, and that's when players started hitting. That's when you know. The, yeah, but that wouldn't help you in fantasy. Won't help you in fantasy, but it's got to be relative. You got to adjust to yeah, what it, pitchers are doing today. That's true. If, uh, Jack Morris, how about this? That's 175 complete games. 175 complete games. Hey, a lot of guys have 175 complete games than the, the older no, guys. No, and a 3.90. Nobody ERA, now. Like said, yeah. That'll never happen. So, yeah, he's not I, a compiler, though. I mean, he was a dominant pitcher. Uh, Gidry, I had Gidry. So I had Gooden, uh, J.R. Richard, Gidry, Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, and Carlton. Hey, what hurt Gidry in 1979 when Rich Gosters got in a fight with Cliff Johnson in the shower? Don't ask me for any more details. <laughs> um Gidry, Nobody got along on that team. <laughs> no, no. Gidry uh, became the relief pitcher, and he went in the bullpen, but he still won 17 games that year. So he followed a 25-win season up with 17 wins in 1970. Do you remember when Gidry played center field? Vaguely. He, um, well, he, he was after, a great In athlete. the resumption of the Pine Tar game, right, after okay. it was protested, yeah. Billy Martin was so pissed off, he put a bunch of misfits out <laughs> on, on the – Field and he put Gidry out in center field. Here's Gidry, 77, 16 and 7, then 25 and 3, 1.7 feet for ERA, 273 innings, and he had 248 strikeouts, followed by 18 and 8. I'm sorry, 18 and 8 and 79, 17 and 10, 11 and 5. Well, look at his ERA. Career ERA, 3.29, 170 and 91. That's a 650 winning percentage. Yeah, for for a, a short period of time, he, he was he, one of the he best. Was, he was Clayton Kershaw yeah. for a short period of time. All right, when we come back. We're going to go over our picks for uh, a lot of the uh, fantasy categories for this year, 2014, and we're going to talk about who we picked for this year for our uh, for our different uh, various categories. We'll be back. 